Welcome to Cloud 941, Sarasota's only political live talk show. We follow Sarasota politics and local politics as well. Tonight we have a great guest, a new face on the scene, Greg Stubbe, who's running for, um, for state representative for the north part of Sarasota as well as Manatee County and I believe part of Hillsborough County as well. He'll kind of tell us a little bit about his district, but uh, uh, he's a new guy that's out there, but he's got a lot of momentum and a lot of support, and it is a contested race that we're going to be following in 2010. Our contact information should be on the screen. Or visit our website, www.clot941, to watch any of our past 25 shows, our past 25 weasels of the week, our commentaries, our predictions. And now to the news. The 287G program is something that uh, is not well known but controversial. When it comes to Ill illegal aliens, there's something, something like 12 million or so in the United States. And INS or ICE doesn't have the resources to go around and round all these people up and pick them up. And one of the people that we use for this are the, are the, uh, the jails, the local jails, the sheriffs. When illegal aliens get arrested for crimes, uh, some of the local facilities are locked into the federal 287G system where they're able to look these inmates up and then deport them after they get their hands on them rather than let them out of jail. In fact, uh, Manatee County was one of the first sheriff's office to get, make their, their, uh, their, their sheriff's office part of the 287G program by deporting illegal aliens who commit crimes. Well, one of the first things that the Obama administration has talked about doing is either doing away with this program or weakening it and having it only applied to illegal aliens who commit quote unquote serious crimes. We think this would be a mistake and this is a bad idea. We'll see where it goes. The other, the other thing that we, we were really disheartened to hear this week is, is another proposal that was floated by the White House, which is they've since changed their mind on, and that's to make veterans who come back from Iraq and Afghanistan with serious combat-related injuries, if they, if they end up getting private health insurance, to have that health insurance pay for their medical care rather than the VA. That's, that's a terrible thing. It was a terrible idea, and we're glad that they abandoned it. Uh, pretty quickly and hope it never comes up again. That would drive up the health insurance premiums for these uh, wounded warriors, make it more difficult for them to get health insurance. These are the people we need to be taking care of when they come back from combat. More than anything else, that's what the government needs to be doing. And now to our guest, Greg Stubbe. Greg, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. It's nice a pleasure to be here. Nice to meet you. You too. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the seat you're running for? You're running for Ron Reagan's seat, right? That's correct. It's uh, District 67. It starts in North Hillsborough County, up just south of Gibsonton. Flows south through Ruskin, Sun City Center, Apollo Beach, to East Manatee County, just about everything east of the Talavas 26th Street area. And flows all the way south to Sarasota County, all the way south to Clark, Clark Road, east of the interstate. So it's actually one of the larger districts in the state of Florida, and it has three counties. How, how many people are in the race now, and do you think that there's going to be a lot of people in the race? Right now, there are two other opponents that have filed, and I don't, there was several people that were thinking about getting in the race, and I don't know if they're still considering that or not, but two folks have filed, and um, I don't know at this point, I haven't heard any other names that are interested in actually filing and going, going through with it, but it'll be interesting to see how the race progresses. We've got a long time. We've got another a year, year and a half to go. So anybody could put, put their name in the hat at any time. Now, Representative Ron Reagan has been extremely popular. He was reelected by, oh, I don't know, 70, you got 75, 80 percent of the vote. Where does he stand on your race? Have you reached out to him, asked for his support? Oh, absolutely. Ron was one of the first people that I went to in the very beginning. He's been extremely supportive from the outset and has endorsed my campaign. He has. Um, so publicly endorsed my campaign and has been extremely helpful. I talked to him today when he was in Tallahassee. He's been extremely helpful on the issues, extremely helpful in putting me into contact with key leaders in our state and discussing the necessary issues. Can you tell me some of the other people who are behind you or supporting your candidacy, people you turn to for advice? Of course. We have the campaign when we announced in January we were endorsed by, as I said, Ron Reagan. We've also been endorsed by Representative Bill Galvano. We've been endorsed by Senator Mike Bennett. The district, as I just described, has three counties. We've been endorsed by every county sheriff, uh, Manatee County Sheriff, of course, my father, uh, Sheriff G. And hope Hillsburg. you get that endorsement. Right, right, that was a little difficult there for a little <laughs> while. It was uh, had to bend some arms and. <laughs> 
But uh, what about the Sarasota Sheriff? Tom Sarasota Hayes? Sheriff has also uh, endorsed my campaign. Donna Hayes, who's the county commissioner in that district for the county commission in Manatee County, has also endorsed my campaign, and many others. Uh, all the endorsements are, for the most part, on our website at www.electgregstuby.com. We've also been endorsed as far as groups and organizations. Last week we were endorsed by the Bells Pack and the District 3 Fraternal Order of Police. Wow, you're off to a great start already. So things are going pretty Long well. Long ways to go, far. too. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um, and what you do for a living? Absolutely. I was born and raised here in Manatee County. I graduated from public school system, graduated from Southeast High School. After high school and during high school I got involved in the ag industry and worked for some of the farms and ranches out in East Manatee County. I decided that agriculture was something that I wanted to do long term so I went to the University of Florida and got an undergraduate degree in animal science with a minor in agricultural law. Spent a lot of time involved in politics on campus, was president of my fraternity, involved in student government, Florida Blue Key, was named to UF's Hall of Fame in 2000 and it was at that point that I decided that I wanted to be involved in politics long term. And so I thought it was important for me to get a legal background. So I decided to go to law school and applied University of Florida and was accepted. Started law school in the fall of 2001. My first semester of law school is when September 11th occurred. And I was moved and motivated by, by the events and decided to enlist in the Army. I didn't take a direct commission to the JAG Corps like I could have. What I did was I enlisted in the infantry, went through basic training, officer candidate school, infantry officer basic course, and then was injured in ranger school and decided at that point to branch transfer from the infantry branch to the JAG branch. And then spent about three years in the JAG Corps, deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 06 to 07 as a, a captain in the 25th Infantry Division, and then recently returned here to the area this past July, and I'm practicing law in the area. What made you want to get into politics? Because that, that, that's tougher than Iraq, maybe. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, it thus far, it's been more challenging than my time in Iraq. I, when I was an undergrad, I interned for the state legislature, and that's what sparked my interest in politics, being involved in ag policy, and that's what spurred my interest to going into law school. So it was started way back in undergrad. I decided that this was something I wanted to do long term. Great. Well, we'll, well, time for our first break. When we come back, we'll find out more about Greg Stubbe, and then we'll turn to some of the issues uh, facing Florida today and see where he stands on some of those.